I'm a lover girl. I always have been and I probably always will be. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys books with black girls being loved down. These black girl romances, I feel like, are all different types. I didn't want to just put like one type of romance. You guys are going to get some fluffy romance wrecks. You guys are going to get some urban romance wrecks. And you're also going to get some like really heartfelt, like makes you cry romance wrecks. So there are 10 here and I'm really excited to show these because I feel like you guys are going to love them. I've also done this video before um, and I've shared 10 in each of those videos. So you guys can go back and watch those as well. Um, I will link them below. Also, before we get into this video, please comment your favorite black romance. Like if there's one that you can think of off the top of your head, comment it below because I feel like for one, I'm always looking for wrecks. Like I'm always looking for good stuff to read. And two, I feel like you probably know of a book that like no one else knows of or maybe hasn't read or isn't hyped up enough. And I feel like this is the perfect way for all of us to like find new book wrecks. And I also think that just like all of us being able to comment and like share and chat in the comments is like such a fun little community like thing to do so anyway comment below a black romance that you guys have loved that you just like constantly gravitate towards or even if it was like mid like that's fine I just would love to get more recs from you guys um that's how I continue to make videos like this so Let's get into this. We are gonna start out with the fluffy romances and we have two. I tried to pick books that I didn't share in the last two videos. So these are all pretty much books that I've read in the last like six months because I think the last video I did was six, five or six months ago. And the first book is Mickey Chambers Shakes It Up. So many people have really, really loved this one. I enjoyed it. I feel like I used to be a fluffy romance girl where like I wanted to read everything fluffy and that's all I really cared about and now I feel like I'm leaning more towards like the urban romance and more of the um heartfelt romances but I still do enjoy a fluffy romance and I feel like they're a great palate cleanser. I think fluffy romances are also fun because like there isn't really anything crazy that happens like there isn't any trauma like all the characters pretty much for the most part have just a really good time and I feel like that's what I need especially during the like weeks when life is just a little bit hard so this one is a good one it's about a bartender a bar owner I guess I'll say and he ends up hiring this girl he's kind of grumpy um he ends up hiring this girl and come to find out that that same girl is actually his professor and he is going back to school at an older age and so there's the dynamic of both of them kind of being each other's boss in like a different setting and obviously they communicate a lot but he's like grumpy she's like sunshine and I feel like this is one that is very underrated. I just think that it's very cute. You can also find this one at Barnes, which is hard to find with a lot of black romances, unfortunately. Another book that I love is One Week in Paradise by Annie Starr. I will link all these below. I think this is the only book that I've actually shared in one of the videos, but I shared it like a year ago. Um, I think all the other ones are all like new recs. So if you watch the older video, you might have seen this one, but I have to share it because summer is coming up and this is the perfect summer read. Um, it is only like 200 and like eight, mm, 210 pages, super short and you'll finish it really fast. It's about a girl who is an influencer and something crazy happens where she kind of ends up like, I don't know, getting canceled in a way. Um, and it's like a huge, huge thing. You don't figure out till like the end of the book, but she um, pretty much is like not communicating with a lot of like her friends and stuff online. And this brand is like, hey, we're gonna send you to Jamaica. So she's like, okay, let me try to dip my toe back into doing like internet things with like internet friends and like brands and stuff. But the brand that wants to send her to Jamaica is like, well, you also have to bring your boyfriend. And she's like, I don't have a boyfriend, but her brother's best friend, he is pretty much like, well, I'll go with you. So they end up going and it is a really um, good good book. I feel like I always recommend this one in the summer because it is a fun one. And this author has two other books um, that were recently released too. And I have not read them yet, but hopefully I will soon. And then let's get into the dark romance. Now I have three dark romance wrecks. Um, I think that if you like, um, or not dark romance, urban romance. <laughs> if you like dark romance, you will like urban romances. And I recently read Luca, which is actually gonna be in this month's wrap up because I read it this month, but I have to share it in this video because I enjoyed it so, 
so much. I have been in the biggest book hangover. I read a book Into the Dark by Jessa Hastings. It's the fifth book in the Magnolia Park series. After I read that book, like I couldn't stop thinking about the characters, couldn't stop thinking about the book and the writing and everything. And every book that I was reading just wasn't hitting. It was like three stars, three stars, three stars. Nothing bad, but just like wasn't finding anything good. Literally fell in love with these characters. And this book is like uh, almost 500 pages long and I read it so fast, ate it up. Um, this is about a girl who is kind of running from her old life and she ends up meeting this guy who he has recently, I don't know if this is on the back or not. Well, I guess there isn't really a ton on the back, but she's running from her old life and she ends up meeting this guy who he also has some little, he's got some baggage too. And she ends up like trying to just stand her on her own two feet. Um, and while she's doing that, she's like, kind of starting to have feelings for this person, but she's like, should I? Because I just like, don't know if I want to jump into anything right now when my life is kind of in shambles. This book gives like, I talk about this in so many vlogs because I just love this book, but this man is a man. Like he is like, like when you think of a man, like it is Luca, like he, if you like dark romance, you will like this book. I'll just say that because like at one point he literally tells her to like shut the F up. And I was like, what? Why do I like this book? Because normally those are not the types of books that I enjoy. Like you guys know I love my fluffy romances and the heartfelt books. I love my soft boys, but something about him being like, like, no, I, and I don't want to spoil anything, but like, He's very like alpha male, but like in a protector way, in a like touch her and you die kind of way. And it was giving, it was giving everything. So I ate this up and I'll be talking about this more in my wrap up, but really enjoyed that one. And then I've also read In This Moment by Kayla Sean. Um, I really like this because uh, for one, this is a series and also so is Luca. So you can continue to read more of the books. But I think I like this because the concept of this story was really different. So it's about a girl who works for this business that um, the business like finds artifacts that are like really old and unique for people that like want them in their home. And so one of her clients is like, hey, I want this specific artifact. The only person who has that artifact is this guy who, I mean, he's like stupid rich, <laughs> like stupid rich. So she goes to him and is like, hey, um, I need this artifact. How much you wanna sell it for? And he's pretty much like, I don't wanna sell it. And she's like, okay, name your price. Like, what do you want? Um, and pretty much comes down to him being like, um, I want you to kind of be at my beck and call as like the price in a way and it was so good so good this is a very quotable story too um i loved it this one is a little bit longer but i feel like i still finished it fairly fast for how long it is it's like 400 and something pages but it's a lot bigger than like your average book like it's a a taller book like this is a regular paperback and this is how tall this one is. So just to see for reference, it's a lot taller and wider, but it still was so good. I ended up buying the second book immediately after I read this one. And then the last um, urban romance that I love is Spin About You by Brianna Dene. I actually own one of her other books that I plan on re reading really soon. It's called um, Keeping to Myself, I think. I'm looking at it over on my shelf. Um, I want to read that hopefully this month. I don't know if I'm going to get to it or not, but I really want to because this book was so good. This like urban romances, I feel like just give the culture, like literally make me feel so seen in them. Um, and this is about a girl who goes to a cabin with some friends around Thanksgiving and they all have like a little get together. And you know, when friends get around to get like all together, it is just, it's a mess, like in a good way. And I really enjoyed this a lot. Um, I feel like this is what introduced me into writing because obviously it's a novella. It's very short. It's only like uh, 73 pages, but it made me so invested because the writing felt like home that I want to read more from her. So that is the last uh, urban romance rec. And then I have some other heartfelt romances. And these are the ones that will like make you cry, just like get in the feels. And I feel like you guys are gonna love these. The first one is Real by Kennedy Ryan. 
Now, I do have the special edition cover. I got this from um, a like online shop. I wanna say it was like, what's it called, Meraki? Something like that, like where people do like resale. Um, but on the back it says, waiting for sunsets was like waiting for a miracle you knew would never come. It like is very vague on the back, so I don't wanna tell too much, but it is about a actress and a director and the director ends up kind of starting to have feelings for the actress. And this actress, she also starts to have feelings for the director, but obviously like they shouldn't be together because like he's kind of her boss. Um, and he also has like a lot of things that have happened in his life. He's like already super famous. And so he's very guarded with his heart. Um, and in this book, there's so many other things too that I think are just enjoyable. And Kenny Ryan just always does a great job with all of her books. But I think one thing that I really like about this one is it interweaves like history and it's not like real history it's like the history from the book but um in the play that they're doing it is a like historical like play so they're telling the story of something that happened in real time in this book um so you actually get like scenes from the play you also get like obviously what's happening in real time um and it's just it's like a forbidden romance it's very good i love this one i got very emotional with this one it was really good and then um another book that i enjoyed was the art of scandal now i don't think that everyone's gonna be obsessed with this and the reason i say that is because it is a little wordy but i almost feel like um i don't know i feel like i'm trying to think of who specifically would like be obsessed with this when i think of this book it makes me think of scandal um if you've seen the show scandal this book literally makes me think of that and i feel like i like this story because the storyline was really unique so it's about a girl who has a husband that i don't want to okay it actually it says it like right in the um front but she has a husband who it says that she gets a on the night of her husband matt's 40th birthday rachel abbott receives a sexy explic explicit text from him that she quickly realizes was meant for another woman so obviously she's like i want to get a divorce like that's happening but he is on a campaign trail and he's like i just don't want to mess up my campaign um so she pretty much tells him like okay i'll stay with you but like i'm getting the house you're gonna give me this much money like we are like doing this for obviously your press and stuff but like we are not to be together so while that is happening and they're like kind of playing house and they also have a daughter so there's like that within the dynamic of this book she um ends up meeting this guy who is just such a sweetheart like such a freaking sweetheart but he has his own things with his family that he's also working through um and she meets him and she's kind of like Ooh, I like kind of have feelings for this guy, but I'm in this like fake wannabe contract with my like not even real husband. So I thought this one was a good one because there was a lot of um, like, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like if you like uh, Seven Days in June, you might like this book. Just the writing is very... It's descriptive, but I don't think it was too much for me. Like, I enjoyed it because there was, like, a lot happening. Um, but I could see how some people would be like, oh, that's maybe not for me. So try it. If you don't like it, give it to a free little library. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It has great reviews um, on Goodreads. And I think the reason for the great reviews is because the storyline is very unique. You don't see the, this story very often. It literally gave scandal. Um, another book that I love is Where We Found Our Passion by Natasha Bishop. Now she wrote Only for the Week and I shared that in one of my other videos so I'm not sharing it in this one but if you haven't read that book you should definitely go read it. I love this book and honestly Natasha Bishop is an auto buy author for me because her books just are so fast paced. They're usually not too long either and there's a lot of like dialogue and there's always something that happens throughout the book that's like outside of the romance plot. Um, I think what I like about this is that the main character he is such a soft boy. It's a friends to lovers story and Pretty much they end up like parting ways and you don't really know why they parted ways but they end up back in each other's life because the main character, um, the female main character, FMC, she ends up having an injury and she has to go to a like physical therapist um, and he is a physical therapist with like sports related injuries. So she ends up going to him and he's just like 
wow, this is great. I haven't seen you in however many years and we used to like have a thing and you just kind of like, like what the heck happened? Um, so you get to see them kind of rekindle their friendship and you also learned what happened in the past that kind of pulled them apart. Um, but they have a very, very, very beautiful like friends to lover story and it's in um, dual timeline, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can't say 100%, but I really do love this book and I actually ended up buying the rest of the series. This is book three. Um, I saw someone on TikTok talking about this book, which is why I bought it, but you don't have to read them in order. Um, I do think that there's some things in this book that maybe would be revealed, but you kind of already know that they're gonna happen. Um, and the only things I say that may be revealed are like who their partners end up with, but like obviously, if you go look at books one and two, you literally can tell like who the main character is in that book because it's like a guy friend group for all of the books. You can tell who the guy is and on the back it like says the girl's name. So it's like, well, obviously we know they're probably gonna end up together. We just don't really know how. Um, but they don't really tell anything other than that. And I don't think it'll be hard for me to read books one and two after reading three. Um, and then Untouchable by Sean, I liked this book a lot. And I think I liked it because it's very rare that you get a romance that feels like something that would happen actually in real life. It's about um, Tallulah and Tallulah has, I wanna make sure, yeah, so she, it says I met the love of my life when I was 10 years old. Um, she's been through a lot, but she met the love of her life when she was younger, but she's just afraid to commit. And um, she's been burned before, so she doesn't really want to open her heart to someone else. So this book is showing how she's like learning to open her heart, but it's a bumpy ride uh, along the whole way to get there. But I really thought that this was a cute friends to lover story. And it's not like a traditional where it's like, they were friends, something pulled them apart and they get back together. It's like, they were friends. She's kind of like, mm, I'm gonna keep you here. Like, I'm a little scared to let you in my heart. So I'm also gonna like mess around with these other guys and then like maybe come back to you. Like it felt very realistic, um, especially because obviously she met her best friend when she was 10 years old. And it's like at 10, it's not typical that people are like settling down at that age. And then another book that I love that's very heartfelt is Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. This one was a thick one and it definitely was a longer read, but Overall, the story was really good. I think it's a powerful story. Um, it's a story I still think about and I think it's because this happens so often in real life and we don't even know it. Um, it is about Iris who, she meets August at a sports bar, but it's kind of like wrong place, wrong time. And then years later, um, after they go their separate ways, she ends up like getting with this guy who is an absolute nightmare. Like he is terrible. Um, and within that, she is kind of like, you see how it's so easy to get stuck being with someone when you know that you're not supposed to be with them. Um, and this book, I think, really takes you along that story. The ending was kind of crazy, like out of the blue. I didn't even like expect it, um, but it was a good book and I ended up buying the rest of the series after I finished this one. And that is all of the books that are just like beautiful black romances that I feel like you guys are gonna love. and. If you want more recs like this, let me know. Also go down to the comments because hopefully you guys will have commented and other people will have commented and you've gotten lots of recs that way. Um, but I feel like on like every platform, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, sometimes it's so hard to find diverse reads, black romances in particular. So I always wanna be a space where you guys can come here just to find like books where you're seen or if you are not like a black woman or a man, maybe you can find like a read that you never would have found from someone else because maybe like the other people that you're watching or following haven't shared these books. So I hope that this is something you guys really enjoy. And if you guys want more videos like this, let me know. And I'll I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.